Hi, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to resolve the problem whereby there's been a source or possibly a juice that has been spilled on this calculator. There you can see how sticky it is. And also the buttons are now, they're not coming out easily. It's almost like they're sluggish. Yeah, it doesn't even want to come out. Right, so in this video, I'll demonstrate how to resolve this problem. I'll need a cloth. Here's a screwdriver to open the calculator, a brush of sorts, and then rubbing alcohol. This is just rubbing alcohol, no additives, no glycol. So it removes oil and it also leaves the surface completely dry. Now, before I disassemble the calculator, it's good practice to just take a photo of it just in case the buttons get muddled when I open it up. I'm not going to bother cleaning this up yet. I'm just going to open it up so long and I have two screws over there. So I'm just going to remove these two screws. And that just goes like that. Right, I have a screw hidden here that was underneath the cover. And then I have two screws at the bottom here. Now on this calculator, I need to separate the back cover from the front cover. So you can use pry tools and wedge it in the gaps here. So there is the pry tool and I just run it along the seam and there you can see the cover is popping off. Now most people don't have those tools so you can also just use your nail. You can, you can push your nail inside there and there I've opened it just using my nail. Now just be careful on some units it wants you to remove the batteries first but in this case this can come out while the batteries are still seated there. Right, when I'm separating the back cover from the front cover, if it's stuck, I don't just pull it because I might snap it. Rather try and open it all the way till the edge so that when it opens, it opens like that rather than like that. If it opens like that, one tends to break these little clips on the side. Right, so here is the inside of the calculator and I'm just going to now disassemble it. There are two batteries here. I'm just going to allow them to come out. Now, unfortunately, the source has gotten inside there. So even if I did clean just the top, I would still have the problem of the buttons being sticky from the inside. So what I have to do is I have to remove the circuit board at the back here. There's a couple of screws and I just have to be very careful here. Right, on this unit, there were quite a number of screws. Yours might not have any screws. If yours doesn't have any screws, you can go straight to the step whereby you pull the circuit board away. Right, so now I'm going to have to flip this open because I've got wires running here. I have a little solar panel there and I don't want to desolder these wires. So I'm just going to let this flip around, being very careful. There I can see some of the juice or sauce which has come through. So what I need to do now is clean all of this. Right, so I'm going to allow these buttons to come out. And now I'm going to clean this thoroughly. And I'm being very careful not to tug on these wires. So to clean these buttons, I can use the rubbing alcohol or I can just immerse them in some warm water and just let them soak for a bit. Right, I'm just soaking the buttons. Right, I'm flipping these both together. And I'm specifically cleaning where the button rubs against the side because there's some residue there. It's still some sticky stuff there and I'm just removing that. Right, even though the button has been soaking, there's still sticky stuff on the side, so some buttons you might even have to manually clean. Now, because there's crevices, I don't want any water to be stuck inside there and falls onto the circuit board of the calculator. So what I'm gonna do is I need to dry these thoroughly. So you can leave these in the sun for a few hours, or I've put it in this towel and I'm shaking them up. And then I'm drying it. And I can actually feel that the tile has got wet from all that excess moisture. Right, so for the most part, that little trick did help dry them. You can see that there's almost no moisture left on the, in the crevices. Right, so I've just flipped this because I want to inspect these pads. Now, this I can remove and it can also be wiped down. So I'm just removing this. And on yours, you might even find that some of the juice got onto this pad. So I'm going to wipe this down. Now, just be careful of the back side here. I don't want to damage these carbon pads. These mate onto the surface here, making contact, which effectively is a button press. So I'm just going to give this also a wipe, mostly just dust. Now, if yours has the juice spilt on it, you'll unfortunately have to clean it thoroughly. If the spillage also got on this side, it's not a problem. You can also take the rubbing alcohol and clean this side, doing a, quite a bit of a superficial clean here. Just make sure you've removed the spillage, but at that point, stop the cleaning. I just dry it. Now, if your spillage also made its way to the board, you can also use the rubbing alcohol to wipe away any spillage that may have found its way onto the board. 
Right, just having a look at the screen, it's a little bit dusty, so I'm just going to also take the rubbing alcohol and just put it on a lint-free cloth and just give this a wipe. This is a lens cleaner. Right, now it's time to reinsert the buttons and you can now look at your photo or if you've got another calculator that's the same, I can just duplicate it. Just keeping in mind, it's a mirror image. Now this calculator, the buttons have a little indentation. That indentation is on the top on this calculator. So that's how I know that the button is facing in the right way. For example, the six and the nine, I know that this is a six because there's the indentation. And on this calculator, the indentation is on the top. And there is the nine with its indentation. Right, so I'm just putting this back and then I'm going to do a quick check to see that all the pieces are in the right place. Right, so I'm holding this firmly in place. So I'm just gonna make sure that the buttons are all in the right places. So here I can see I've made a mistake. It's one, two, three, not three, two. I've made a mistake here as well. Now, just a note, if you are touching this with your fingertips, there's often oil on people's fingers. So just be careful not to deposit any oil on the surface. If you are worried that you have, just take some rubbing alcohol and then just wipe off any possible oil that was on your fingers. And the same is true for the surface over here. I've corrected the two, three, five, and six. If you did happen to touch this LCD screen, you might need to wipe it with a tiny bit of rubbing alcohol as well. Gently wiping this with some rubbing alcohol, just to get any possible fingerprints that I may have deposited on the surface. And then using a circular motion, I dry it. Right, now I grab on the edges and I flip this back onto the pads and now I can return these screws. Right, I just make sure that these wires are rooted correctly and there's a little recess for the wire on the side there. Now just before closing this, if you can, just blow inside there. Sometimes little bits of dirt get stuck in there even though I had cleaned it. And that will make sure there's no little specks underneath this plastic screen. Now, say for example, you're a little bit rough or it wasn't soldered very well. And say for example, this actually broke off just like that. Look at that. The wire has come off. All I need to do is expose a little bit of the wire that was there by just pinching it with my nail. There's the wire. And unfortunately, you will need a soldering iron. And I just put a little bit on the wire and then I'll hold that wire down and I'll just solder this quickly. And there I've just re-soldered that wire. Right, before I close it, just make sure the wires are all on the inside of the seam here. And now I can close this. Now in this unit, some screws are longer than others, so just put them back the way you took them out. And after replacing the batteries, I now put in the two longer screws. All the buttons work correctly and it's now good as new. Thanks for watching and cheers.